Hey, welcome back to the College Algebra Review for the Final Exam. Uh, this will be our last part, number 31 through, I think there's 37. Let's get started. Solve the exponential equation, and we're going to show the method of common bases, because I think that's going to work on this problem. So we have 4 to the 2x minus 1 equals, what I would like to do, is turn 1024 into a 4 to some power. And so all I need to do is figure out what exponent I need to raise 4 to to get 1024. And the way I can do that with my calculator is I can just start and I can say, okay, 4 to the sec 4, well, it's not 4 squared, obviously. That's too small. Uh... 4 to the 3rd is 64. How about 4 to the 4th? That's 256. 4 to the 5th is 1024. Okay? So then I can figure out with my calculator that 4 to the 5th gives me 1024. And once the bases match, they cancel. And so that's going to give me 2x minus 1 equals 5. And then two more steps and I'm done. Negative 1 comes over, makes a plus 1. Divide both sides by 2. X equals 3. Super easy. And then if I want to plug that back in and check, I can. But I'm not going to. But I can. <clears throat> Next page. Number 32. Solve the exponential equation. Notice it says round to three decimal places. And we have a base of E. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the base down. That makes it log base E. And switch the other two around. So 0 0.2 equals negative 0.09T. That is converting exponential to log. Bring the base down, switch the other two around. Now, important point, log base E is something special. Log base E is really natural log of 0 0.2 equals negative 0.09t, and I'm to the last step. I need to divide by the coefficient of t, and then I need to plug this fraction into the calculator. <clears throat> All right, here we go, into the calculator. We've got natural log of 0.2 divided by uh, negative 0.09. And if I round that to three decimal places, that is 17.883. And you do need to round that correctly. 17.883. Round it to three decimal places correctly. Next problem. Solve the logarithmic equation. And so here we're going to do the poem again. We're going to convert log to exponential this time. We're going to bring the base down. Switch the other two around. And then I'm going to need to figure out what is 5 to the 3rd power. Well, that's 125. And then I've got two more steps and I'm done. <clears throat> Bringing the 3 over gives me a 128. And divide both sides by 3. 128 equals 3x. Divide both sides by 3. And I don't think that divides evenly, but I'm going to use my calculator to check. And that is my final answer. 128 over 3. And please leave it improper. That's the way I like it. All right, number 34. <clears throat> We're going to solve another log equation, but this time there's two logs. And so that means that I have to get all the logs on the same side so that I can combine them. So if I bring this minus log over, that's going to become 
uh, plus log x. The log of x minus 9 is also positive. So I say plus log of x minus 9 equals 1. Now to combine these two logs, we're going to use the product rule. Because there's addition, it'll make multiplication when I combine them. Did everybody see how that works? The product rule says the two logs become one and their stuff gets times. And that condenses into a single logarithm. And now I need to remind you that if there is no base showing, that's understood to be base 10. And now we're going to bring the base down, switch the other two around. So the 1 becomes the exponent on the 10, and I'm going to go ahead and do the distributive property on the fly. Notice the x squared show up. That makes the equation quadratic. Therefore, I have to set it equal to 0. So the 10 to the 1 is going to have to move over. That'll make it minus 10. And then we're going to solve this quadratic equation by factoring. <clears throat> All right, if I read the signs, the signs are going to be different. X and X to make X squared. And numbers that multiply to make 10 that subtract and make 9 are 1 and 10. And notice the 10 has to go with the minus because I needed negative 9. 1 minus 10 is negative 9. And now that this equation is factored, I can set each factor equal to 0. Moving the 1 over, moving the 10 over, gives me x is negative 1 and x is 10. Now, if I check, which I need to check those, okay, <clears throat> it's going to turn out that the 1 doesn't work and the 10 does. Let me prove that. Log of x minus 9, log of x minus 9, and here I'm checking the negative 1 first, plugging negative 1 into every x, uh, equals 1 minus log x, which is negative 1. And if I was to highlight this in red, right here, you cannot take the log of a negative number. So that's not going to work. And the negative 1 is trash. And then if you do check the 10, the 10 will work. Uh, I'm not going to show that. But you can plug in the 10 and check it and see that it works if you want to. All right, next problem, number 35. We have a compound interest problem, but notice it says compound continuously. And compound continuously means that I'm using the PERT formula. Uh, let's see, PERT. The amount is the principal times e to the rt. That is the formula when it says compound continuously. And then all I need to do is plug and play. The principal is 6,000. e is not a variable, so e stays e. The rate is 5.6%, 0 0.056 as a decimal. And the time is seven years. And then to the handy dandy calculator. My Casio FX115 ES Plus to the rescue. <clears throat> and since this is a money equation, we know that we need to round to the nearest penny. So this is going to be 8800 $79.63 if I round it to the nearest penny. 
And so there's that problem worked completely. Next page. All right, word problem. Uh, this is a radioactive decay problem. Notice that they do give me the function. And it says how long, that means I'm looking for T, how long will it take for the uh, substance to decay to 10 grams? That number is your A of T. So to set this up, we're going to say 10 equals... 500 e to the negative 0.033 t. Remember, we're looking for t, and so t is going to be the variable. Now, to solve this exponential equation, the first step is to get rid of the coefficient of e. And so we're going to divide both sides by 500. Uh, 10 divided by 500, that's 1 50th. Let's see, is 1 50th a nice decimal? I think it is. 1 50th. I'm going to go with 0 0.02 equals e to the negative 0 0.033t. And now if you notice, I now have an exponential I can convert to a log. We're going to bring the base down. Remember, log base e is natural log. Bring the base down, switch the other two around. So the 0.02 comes here. The exponent goes over here. Negative 0.033t. All right, so what have we got? We've got negative 0.033t equals the natural log of 0.02. And to finish this off, we're going to divide both sides by the coefficient of t. And then we're going to plug into the calculator. Natural log of 0 0.02 divided by negative 0 0.033. And what do they want me to round to? It says round to the nearest year. So that's going to be 119 years. So how long will it take for the sample to decay to only 10 grams? It's going to take almost 120 years, 119 years. Number 37, write the system of linear equations as an augmented matrix. So we're going to need to do that and then solve the system Using Gaussian elimination, uh, I'm not going to use Gauss-Jordan. I'm going to use Gaussian because that gets us to row echelon form, not reduced row echelon form. First step, matrix. We're going to have to write the matrix. And so that's going to be <clears throat> 1, negative 5, negative 19, 2, negative 5, negative 18. There's the matrix. And to get to row echelon form, uh, the first uh, objective is to get this 2 to become a 0. We need to get rid of the 2. And so the row operation that we're going to use to achieve that is negative 2 times row 1 plus row 2 to get a new row 2. That's our row operation. Notice that row 2 is going to change. So what does that mean about row 1? It stays the same. And now we're going to execute the row operation, okay? And I realize I made my matrix a little too big. Bam, something like that. And that. All right, here we go. <clears throat> here we go. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Negative 2 times negative 5 is 10. 10 minus 5 is 5. 
negative 2 times negative 19 is positive 38 minus 18 is 20. And so there's the first row operation. And notice that that does get the 2 to become a 0. Now, the next objective. I now need to get this 5 to become a 1. And the easiest way to do that is to just take row 2 and divide it by 5. And that'll make a new row 2. Okay? So again, notice that row 2 is going to change. What does that mean about row 1? Stays the same. Copy and paste. And now we're going to divide every element of row 2 by 5. 0 divided by 5 is 0. 5 divided by 5, 20 divided by 5. And now we are in row echelon form. Okay, now how do I know that? Because the diagonal is all 1s, and everything below that diagonal is 0. Okay, that's how we know that we're in row echelon form. And that means that we can now do back substitution. All right, so instead of that, let's do this. So I don't want I don't want to get too com uh, complex. Let's just recopy this now that I've written on it. And what back substitution says, it says start at the bottom and convert that back into an equation, okay? So remember that these uh, this column here were the x's <clears throat> and this column were the y's. And so if we convert this back into an equation, it says no x, 1y, 1y equals 4, and that is the answer for 4. Now, we're now going to go back up a level and convert that back into an equation. And this says 1x minus 5y equals negative 19. Notice I didn't write the letter y because I know what y is. And so I'm going to substitute as I go. And that's going to give me x minus 20 equals negative 19. Minus 20 moves over <clears throat> and gives me x is 1. And then I do need to finish that off as an ordered pair. And remember, ordered pair matters what order it's in alphabetical order, x comma y. And what did we just do? We found the point of intersection for this system of linear equations, okay? If I were to graph those lines, they would intersect at the ordered pair 1, 4. And I did it using the method they asked for, okay? And that is the end of page 13. That's the end of the final exam review. Man, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below, or you can text me. And thanks for watching.